I want to talk to you about the Voyager Golden Records. This is a part of both Voyager spacecraft. It's a record, a, a literal record, as in record player record, designed by Carl Sagan, Frank Drake, a few others, uh, to send a message out into the cosmos, whatever that means. One way is to beam it, like we're pretty good at blasting radio waves out into space, so if anyone's picking up, uh, they'll hear us. But another way is to actually send a, a physical artifact, and that's the case. The The Voyager missions that, that traveled, sailed through the outer solar system in the 70s and 80s, Voyager 1 is now in interstellar space. It's carrying not just the scientific gear that we loaded it down with, uh, but also this artifact of our culture, this kind of sampling of our culture. And I honestly don't know. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. I honestly don't know if this is a a, a, a powerful message, is something, something really uh, worthwhile and interesting, or if it's just kind of silly and useless. Uh, to set that up, let me give you some context. Voyager 1, we'll focus on Voyager 1. Voyager 1 is in interstellar space. It's traveled beyond the influence of the of our sun. In 2025, it'll completely run out of power, and so no more communication with it. It'll just be a hunk of metal racing through the void. In about 300 years, it will reach the inner boundary of what we call the Oort cloud. The Oort cloud is the debris field. It's the dusty, icy bits left over from the formation of the solar system. Our solar system itself is encased in this diffuse, thin shell of, of icy bits that we call the Oort cloud. This is the home of long period comets, comets that only get to visit once at most. This is where they come from. Uh, in 300 years, Voyager 1 will reach the inner boundary of the Oort cloud. Eventually, Voyager 1 will come uh, close to another star. It will come within uh, 1.6 light years of the star called Gliese 445. That will happen in 40,000 years. That's its next closest to approach to another star, any star, is Gliese 445, and that won't happen for 40,000 years. After that, it gets a little bit hard to predict because uh, uh, chaotic motions of stars, new stars being born, dying, uh, scattering, but we're pretty sure that will be the closest that Voyager 1 will encounter another star ever. And so its fate will be a hunk of metal sailing around the Milky Way galaxy. It's in a circular orbit, just like our own sun is in a circular orbit. It will make a complete circumnavigation of the Milky Way galaxy in about 200 million years. It'll end up at its starting point. That's it. That's its ultimate fate of Voyager 1. And so the record, the golden record, To, for anyone, for any other advanced civilization to find it, to spot it, to encounter it, to travel to it, capture it, I mean, the odds are astronomically low. So yeah, on, on a sentimental side, it sounds cool. Like, yeah, let's send some songs and some pictures and some voices of babies going, mama, mama, or you know, what, all the stuff that we, that we put on the, that golden record. It's, it's, it's us. It's a piece of humanity. It will certainly outlive us. That's for sure. Uh, but to what end? To just send this message into the interstellar void and then just call it a day? Knowing that the odds of someone or something encountering it are so low, it's not even worth considering. It's not even worth calculating. 
because of the expanse of interstellar space. And then even if they were able to capture, it's not like we didn't pack a record player. Instead, there's a diagram and you have to see the di- be able to see the diagram, be able to interpret the diagram, be able to construct the record player, be able to, to, to spin the record player at the right, the right speed and then try to gather any meaning at all from what comes out. Maybe it's all nonsense. We've never done this before. I, you know, I believe uh, Sagan and Drake and the others had, had good intentions and did the best they could. But it's like, how do you design something to be understood by something that by definition is alien to not just us, but our entire earthly experience? So on um, uh, one side, it's a grand gesture, you know, the noblest aspect of humanity. And I get that and I respect that. On the other, it's... A waste of time? Maybe? I don't know. What do you think? Hey, it's me again. I know you just watched a few minutes of me, but who couldn't use a little bit more me? I'm just here to beg you to please subscribe. And if I remember, there's going to be a button like right here uh, where I'm vaguely gesturing. So if you like what you just saw, uh, you'll get more of it if you subscribe. Super easy.